Yes, sir. Okay, what are some of your favorite things about playing your roles in Tales of Exilia and Soul Eater? They're two different shows. I like that. Uh, well, one's a game. Uh, Ox was just cool because I had gotten to audition for Soul Leader and I really, really liked the theme of the world and the art style, so uh, being able to have a character in that was really fun. And he's one of the most bizarre looking characters I've ever played, too. It's like, normally you get all, you know, like the pretty boy characters, the heroes, stuff like that. Nope, not Ox. He's bald with very squiggly glasses and two little horn-like things of hair that for whatever reason are there. Uh, and he was just cool, kind of filled with confidence. He's, deaf, he's obviously the brainiac. Uh, it was just a lot of fun comedically to get to play him, especially when uh, he has the episode with Excalibur. Uh, Luger, yeah. Excalibur. Uh, Troy frickin' Baker. <laughs> My God, that man. Uh, the Alec Guinness of the voice world. The veteran gets around. Uh, there's, uh, and then Luger. Luger was interesting because it was, A, getting to play a player character in a Tales game was just like, oh, awesome. Uh, the getting to play Luger, aside from the 25 hours of recording, that was nothing but, <coughs> 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 uh, uh, was super cool just because, and I can't really fully answer the question because it also comes with a spoiler, a huge, heavy spoiler in the game. Uh, but getting to play him, there is a duality to him and to his character that y y if you haven't played all the way through, you might not know about it yet. But it was definitely fun. Also getting to work with uh, Wendy Lee, who directed me, who was my voice director for that. I've never met her, but I've been listening to her since the 90s in the animes and stuff that I love, like Magic Knight Rare and Cowboy Bebop and, and all these great, wonderful shows that she's been part of, Digimon. Uh, and getting to actually meet her and work with her was a, was a real treat. Kind of a, another fanboy dream come true. So, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, and, and Ox, um, just wanted to let you know that Liz, you might want to see Liz when you get a chance. She was the one that plucked her hair out during the test. Oh, yeah? All right, cool. Good to know. <laughs> yes! Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I have a jellyfish question. Okay! Of course. Would he wear a dress at their wedding if he, if he ever got married? Would, would he wear a dress at their wedding? Or would he or would make him wear a dress? She wouldn't make him do anything. That boy does whatever he wants. <laughs> and you better believe he will have the most fabulous wedding dress the world has ever seen, darling. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yes. Kuranosuke will be throwing a bouquet at his wedding, that is for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, fucking test. Um, okay, um, I think my question is for Aki. Uh, yes! Okay, which one would you pick, Minami or Himeji? Uh, Minami's kind of like my sister, you know? She's, she's kind of like one of the guys. Don't tell her I said that. Uh, <laughs> plus, I mean, Himeji's just the epitome of all that is beautiful and sweet and kind in the world, and I just love it, but don't eat her cooking, whatever you do. Do not eat her cooking. It's like the devil, seriously. You eat her cooking, the devil is in your soul. Uh, I think, oh, hello. Turning that off. Uh, I think definitely he would pick Himeji, because, I mean, at the, even at the beginning of the show, we already had established that they both kind of had feelings for each other. Yeah. Uh, he's just way too stupid to ever make the proper move. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't even know what to do if he had the chance. So, yeah, I, that, that would be my answer. Actually, no, I'm going to change it. Hideyoshi's my wife. Yeah! Like, uh, <laughs>